All right, so this is going to be the first in a series of videos that's going to kind of basically go over the types of problems we've seen, the solution techniques to these problems, and then uh, some examples with numbers, and then kind of general um, demand functions that we, we can derive with them. All right, so I thought in this video I'd just kind of make sure we're on the same page about the, the types of preferences we've seen so far, and maybe hints on how to identify them. So... The first one, maybe we can talk about perfect complements. See, these, these are preferences where the consumer wants to consume these goods like in some kind of fixed proportion or together. So like, you know, you always have a certain amount of milk with your tea or, you know, I forget what the other examples would be that we've done, but, but things like that, printer and printer ink, stuff like that. So keywords to look for here are like fixed proportions. And in general, the utility functions that represent these preferences have this min function attached to them. So here's an example of, of a utility function to represent these perfect complement uh, preferences. And the key is the min. I mean, if you're given a utility function that has this min in it, you should think about it, them, uh, these preferences being fixed proportions and then use the solution techniques for perfect complements to find the solution to that. You know, some there's some weird cases, but in general in this course, like that's, that's gonna be the right, right way to think about it. So remember these are the, oops. Indifference curves that represent these preferences are these like right angle ones. And that's going to be key to figuring out um, the solution technique. Okay, so that's the first type of problem we've seen. I'm not doing them any particular order here. Um, the next type of problem are these perfect substitutes. So we've seen this a few times. Like, you know, we saw like wording like, oh, all they care about is the total number they have or the total amount of caffeine they have if we're... If we're talking about um, that question on assignment two about you know hot chocolate and and espresso espresso I should say um, so things like that that's like the wording that might give a clue in terms of like an example of a utility function I mean there's lots of different ones it could be five x plus three y or anything like that but really you usually see like the two oops, I should say x two Really, you usually see the two um, the two terms separated, and the key here is that the MRS is constant, and that's the key feature of these uh, types of preferences. And this constant MRS means our indifference curves are straight lines. Remember, the MRS is the slope of these indifference curves, and the MRS is just the negative margin utility of 1 over margin utility of 2 equals the, the MRS. And so, for example, in this one, we see the, the slope is 5 over 3, right? The partial with respect to x1 is 5, the partial with respect to x2 is 3, so the slope is negative 5 over 3. But the key here is these perfect substitutes are these straight lines for, um, for the indifference curves. So you can always calculate the, the marginal rate of substitution as soon as you see it's flat or it's uh, constant. Then we're like, okay, these are perfect substitutes. We're going to use this technique to solve for them. And we're going to you know, have a subsequent video where we're going to break down all the techniques to do this. This first video is just about identifying them. The third type um, of preferences we've seen are these kind of well-behaved preferences. You know, lots of times the question might say that they're well-behaved, especially if it's kind of not obvious. Like the obvious ones that as soon as you see them, you should know they're well-behaved are things like these Cobb-Douglas ones we've seen a lot. You know, x1 to the one half, x2 to the one third, or something like that. So. The thing about these preferences is, is you know, especially these, well, these Cobb-Douglas ones anyway, they're like strictly convex, they have these nice properties, 
um, and they're nice, these bow shaped indifference curves. And that's going to be key to solving them because we can use that tangency MRS condition we've talked about a lot. So here's an indifference curve. It has these nice bow shaped and these nice smooth ones. But to look, you know, how to identify it is to either, you know, look for Cobb Douglas or lots of times if, if there's an indifference curve, we, or a utility function maybe you haven't encountered before, you know, we would usually say, oh, they have well-behaved preferences represented by this utility function, blah, 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 blah. Um, just to kind of tell you that these are well-behaved preferences. But if you see a, a Cobb-Douglas one, then, then you should know they're well-behaved. And the last one are kind of like really similar to um, these Cobb-Douglas or these well-behaved ones. And the solution techniques can be like really, really similar. Um, but they look a little bit different. They have kind of different features. Uh, are these quasi-linear preferences? And usually a question would just say they're quasi-linear if it wasn't obvious. I think that's what they do on the second assignment. But um, in general, they're not hard to identify because you know they're non-linear in one of the goods and linear in the other. So here, you know, natural log is a non-linear function, and this is a linear function. Or you could have the square root of x1 plus x2. This is nonlinear. This is linear. So you can just look at the utility function and, and you'd see it. It's going to be really hard. You know, the wording of the question might just tell you they're quasi-linear, but it's really hard to like give you wording that is going to lead you to be able to like write out a, a utility function for these quasi-linear. That's much easier for those like perfect complements and perfect substitutes. In general, what these indifference curves that represent these preferences look like are these kind of like, in this case, like these kind of like mirrored up indifference curves. So here's a bunch of them. They're kind of like vertical mirrors of each other. Um, and that's going to be kind of a key feature of the solutions to them. And we're going to really tackle the solutions or these quasi-linear problems quasi-linear preference problems, just like we do these types of problems, these well-behaved ones, we just have to watch out to make sure we don't get like a corner solution, that we don't just consume zero of one good and send all of our money on the other good. And we're going to see that by just like noticing that, oh, this is a weird result. We can't consume a negative amount, so we're not going to consume any of it. Whereas if these well-behaved functions, just because the shape of these curves, you're, like, you're never going to get a corner solution with these um, with these Cobb Douglas ones, right? Like you're never going to consume zero of either good here. Maybe you can just look at the function C that you'd never do that. You'd always want to consume a little bit of each good um, optimally, unless your, your budget was zero, obviously. All right, so these are the four different types of problems we've seen and how to identify them. The next video I'm going to do is going to kind of just list these and then talk about the solution methods to each of them.